following the reinstatement of Zimbabwe cricket uh, by the International Cricket Council on the 14th of uh, October, we felt it was important that we engage with the stakeholders, the media being, uh, being one of the major stakeholders of Zimbabwe cricket, and uh, speak to you about our future and reflect on what has been happening in the past few months. Um, as you're well aware that uh, Zimbabwe cricket was uh, suspended by the, Zimbabwe, by the International Cricket Council on the 18th of uh, July um, at its uh, annual conference in London. And obviously we lost uh, our rights as a member, rights to the board, funding was suspended. Um, the consequences which we all know, um, non-participation in ICC events which uh, resulted in us not being able to participate in the women's qualifiers uh, in Scotland and of course the ongoing uh, men's qualifiers uh, in Dubai. Um, the players and staff have um, had to go for months without salaries, without, uh, without made fees because funding has been uh, stopped by, by ICC. And it's obvious that any further sanctions to what, is, what has been uh, in place would have been um, disastrous for the cricket in the country. Um, but as I address you today, this afternoon, I do so with delight. Indeed, of course, I'm elated that the ICC has reinstated us with all our rights as a full member of the International Cricket Council. The lifting of Zimbabwe cricket suspension was confirmed by, at the ICC board meeting held in Dubai this Monday, as I've said earlier on. This is an outcome of a series of meetings that were uh, led by the Honorable Minister of Sports, as Youth and Recreation uh, Case Covenant uh, between Zimbabwe Cricket and the SRC. And um, it's important that I, 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 I um, extend my gratitude to the Minister for the role that she's, she has played for SRC and Zimbabwe Cricket to, to, to find each other and to ultimately ensure that Zimbabwe's membership was reinstated. We are of course uh, grateful to the ICC and fellow boards for their support for Zimbabwe cricket and our cricket. Let me take this opportunity on behalf of Zimbabwe cricket to say thank you to all to our staff and players as well as their families for remaining supportive and committed to the organization and our game during such a trying period. I salute their spirit and dedication. That's why even when the future was uncertain, we were able to play competitively in the, in the away tri-series in Bangladesh and Singapore. While back home, we launched provisional, provincial women's league tournaments across the country. The big question now is probably what the lifting of ZC suspension means. This is a huge relief for us and it marks the beginning of a new exciting chapter for our cricket, with ZC's focus now fully back on ensuring that our game is thriving, sustainable and financially stable. The ICC will continue to drip feed funds to ZC as per the agreement we reached in July 2018, and this means we will be able to settle outstanding salaries and main fees. Zimbabwe men's and women's teams are now able to compete in ICC events again with our immediate focus turning to the upcoming ICC Under-19 World Cup starting January in South Africa. While our men's ODI team will join the Super League for the 2020, from 2020, we have a considerable busy calendar with a number of tours aligned, already lined up starting with the home series against Rwanda sometime mid-January to end of January. We will now also be able to run our domestic competitions while a lot of other development programs already in place can continue. It is not a secret that we have been operating in a challenging economic environment and at a time the game's traditional income sources have either been in a decline or relatively static. Our legacy dates only exacerbated matters, but as you may already know, before the suspension we had already taken drastic measures designed to steer ZC back to financial and operational stability through the implementation of intricate debt resolution plan 
the rigorous management of costs, the diligent pursuit of new revenue streams, and the decentralization of our cricket operations. The ground for the future, the future where Zimbabwe cricket will be debt free and will not struggle to pay staff and pay salaries, a future where our core business will thrive and see us consistently qualifying for and doing well in major global tournaments and series across, across all formats of the game. It's already been late and we intend to build on the successes that we have already achieved. As stakeholders of Zimbabwe cricket, we have experienced a range of emotions in the past, some highs, and it is true to say maybe too many lows. But now it's about the future. It is clear that on, on field performance and at an international level will always be seen as the yardstick for success as a full member of the ICC. Therefore, as the organization responsible for producing a successful national team, we have to create a structure where this is ultimately, where this is our ultimate goal. And I believe my duty as chairman of Zimbabwe Cricket is to ensure the structures are in place and that will help make a positive difference. That will help give future Zimbabwe teams the best possible chance. That is what I fully intend to do and that is what the board has mandated us to do. Club and age group and schools cricket are a vital part of this ZC and, and ZC will get more involved at those levels. You will all agree that our club structure is in a bit of a disarray. We need to rearrange our clubs, club, club, club cricket. We need to relook at our age groups. We need to relook at our schools cricket. Riding on the success of the ICC Women's Qualifiers Africa 2019, that we hosted and we won. We have launched women's T20 leagues in all provinces as we seek to get more girls involved to an earth new talent that will take Zimbabwe to the top of women's world, world cricket. After missing out on both the recent 50 over and next year's T20 World Cup tournaments, we have now focused, turned our focus on the future. We are now shifting our focus to rebuilding a new look senior national team. And to do that, we must gradually blood in younger players and create a new culture that encourages units, hard work, professionalism, and excellence. What we are simply saying is that no one is a permanent place in the Zimbabwe cricket team. No one is a permanent place in the Chevrons. No one is a permanent place in the women's team. We have to have a culture of people who fight to be in the team. And when they get the chance, they cherish and make the best of that chance. We cannot continue to have a situation where uh, we have the same faces and the same results. We are obviously not looking to make wholesome changes as we definitely need some of the experienced players to help the new generation find their feet in, in, in international cricket. While we are organizing more games for our national teams across all eight groups, we are also stopping at nothing to ensure our first class and other domestic competitions remain strong and competitive. We will be releasing our domestic and uh, international calendars soon. We can afford to let our generations of kids, who might otherwise have made it at top level cricket, we can afford to let down the fans who we'll turn up in their thousands whenever and wherever we play, or those who follow the live action on television. Together we can only look to the future with hope and uh, great expectations. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen.